Praise the Lord, saints. This is Pastor Glenda Gray coming to you once again from Zion Ministries. Uh, today is a beautiful day here. The sun is not shining, but yet it is still beautiful because this is the day that the Lord has made. And so I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what the weather is. Um, today uh, is the day before a Mother's Day. And so I want to wish all of the mothers, all of the would-be mothers, all of the mothers of, of the future, happy Mother's Day. Whether you're an aunt, a, a mother, an aunt, a cousin, whatever you are, if you are a, someone who has influence over children to help children, you can consider yourself to be a mother figure. Uh, so today I want to talk about a woman who is a great woman, a mother figure, and her name is Hannah. Her story is told in the first uh, book of Samuel, uh, chapter one. She is the mother of Samuel, but her story is one that endures forever, which we can understand why it is written here in the scripture. I'm not going to read all of the uh, this chapter regarding Hannah, but I'm going to read these a, a few verses to you and then we'll talk about why she is so important to all mothers everywhere. Uh, beginning with verse 9 and this is chapter uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1 beginning with verse 9 it says so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow that, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the, unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Now, some of us may be familiar with uh, the story of uh, Hannah. Other, others of us may not. But here, this story is starts off talking about a man uh, who is from the um, from Mount Ephraim. His name is Elkanah, and he has two wives. He has one wife by the name of Hannah. The other name is Penina. Now, Penina has children, and Hannah has none. And from year to year, it talks about the the feast that they go to, that God has set forth uh, for the yearly feast, that they, they would go and give their tithes and their offerings unto God. And it said that when they get, it came time to give the off, tithes and offering, that he would give a good a, a portion to uh Penina and her children, but he would give a greater, great portion to Hannah because he loved her. And at this particular time, it talks about the fact that Penina uh, taunted uh, Hannah because she had no children. And so she had this bitterness in her soul because she had no children. Because uh, in those days, as is now, it was a blessing to have children and not only a, a just children, but to have your first to be a man child. And so she uh, was, she felt this bitterness in her spirit. And she, uh, her husband said, no, why are you? He said, I'm better to you than any son, but it still was not the same to her. So she went to the temple uh, and she began to pray. And as she's praying, she's only moving her mouth. Uh, she's not saying anything out openly. She's just moving her mouth. She's praying to God. And so when Eli, the priest, sees her, he thinks that she is drunk. And he tells her, you ought to be ashamed of yourself here at the temple of God, drunk. And she said, oh, I'm not drunk. I am just, my spirit is just uh, in bitterness because I have uh, cried out to God for a child. And she said, she had made this vow. She said, Lord, if you will give a child to me, I'll give him back to you all of his life, not part of it, but all of his life. And he would become a Nazarite as we see in the book of Judges that Samson was supposed uh, was supposed to have been a, a Nazarite. He was not supposed to shave his hair or do anything. And that was a Nazarite was one whose hair was not, uh, was not shaved. And that a vow to God is part of the vow that they're making unto God. And so here she makes a vow to God that Lord, if you give me a man child, I'll give him back to you. And so he tells her, he said, well, you know, uh, I understand now what, you know, what you were doing. And so I'm going to 
uh, tell you to go home and the Lord is going to bless you with a child. And sure enough, God blessed her. And you know, many of us as parents, we forget to give our children, I often say, what we have. I grew up in the church uh, from the beginning. I was always in the church. But a lot of us, uh, we uh, got educated and, 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 and we began to take philosophy 101 and all of a sudden, all of the things that we learned growing up knowing about God, oh, everything has changed because we are educated. God doesn't care about our intelligence. God cares about our faithfulness to him. He wants us to be faithful to him. Uh, and if we're not faithful, we can't receive the promises that God has unto us. We remember the story of Jesus when he went back to his hometown. He said it, he did not, not much healing because of their lack of faith. It takes faith faith to overcome the trials and tribulations of this world. So faith is so important, not the size of, because there is no such scripture as the size of a mustard seed, but faith as a mustard seed, which starts small, but then it grows as we see what God can do. And so here she made this vow to God, Lord, if you give me the son, I'll give him back to you. We need to begin to, if we haven't already done it, give our children back to God, not after we messed them up and say, I can't do anything with them anymore. But before they start on this journey, let's give them to God so they will have a chance in this old wicked world. We want to mess them up and then turn them over to God and say, well, God, I can't do that with you. You know, they grown now. But as you read the, the book of uh, uh, Samuel, you find out that God never told us that when a child becomes of legal age, that we're no longer responsible for what they do. As a matter of fact, there is a story in here about Eli, the same priest we're talking about, who has two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and they were a priest in the church as well, but they were doing everything against God's will. They were sleeping with the women and they were taking the offerings that should have been going to God and they were taking it for them. Themselves. It said it was causing the people not to want to bring offerings into the temple. And God tells Eli, he said, because you did not correct your sons. And remember, you had to be over 20 to be, uh, to be uh, a, a priest. He said, if you, because you did not correct them, that I'm going to cause them to die on the same day. So even as parents of grown uh, 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 adult children, we are still responsible for their uh, walk with God. We're supposed to, until the day one of us leaves here, we are supposed to continue to uh, let them know about God, make sure that they're walking with God, correct them until one of us leaves this earth. You know, we're living in a time now where uh, over and over again, we're seeing parents bury their children and it ought not to be that way. But a lot of it is the result of us not teaching our children uh, about the ways of God. I'm not saying that the particular parent who lost a child, that that's what they didn't do. I'm just saying that the world on a whole, the church and the whole... Because we're not teaching the importance of walking with God as the whole world, then, you know, God reigns upon the just as well as the unjust. So we're seeing our children going home to be with the Lord before we go. We're burying our children. It should not be on the, in the masses that we're seeing today. So what does God tell us to do? He's telling us to come back to him, get it right with him, do uh, uh, what Hannah did, teach our children about God. The scripture says that the church is supposed to teach the parents so that the parents can go home and teach the children and the children's children. So it always falls back on the church. That's why it's so important who you're sitting up under, who you're learning God's word through. It is so important that as you're sitting uh, in the church, that you're listening with your spiritual ear to make sure that uh, what the pastor is saying is correct that you may be able to discern right or wrong when it comes to God. We look at Hannah. She did exactly what she made her promise to God uh, she would do. 
After she weaned her son, she took her son to Eli and gave him over to Eli to be brought up uh, in the church. She literally just gave him and he grew up in the church. And not only did he become a, 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 a priest, but he became a, a, a prophet and, and he walked with God and his walk was so close with God that the scripture said that God would not allow any of his words to fall to the ground, which meant that God was with them. The people knew that God was with him because of the type of walk he had with God. And why? All because this mother made sure that her son knew God. Time now for us to examine our families and see, have I made sure that my children understand what this journey is all about? Do my children know that God is real? Do my children see the Christ that is within me? It is so important for us, you know, to make sure that our children are not left uh, at a disadvantage by not knowing who the one true living God is, not knowing that Jesus Christ is our Savior, not knowing that the cross that we're talking about is not jewelry for fashion, but it is a remembrance of the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who went upon that cross and became our sins and died upon that cross, went through the humility of being on the cross, for our sakes, each one of, us, one of us can say he did it just for me, that we may be able to receive the promise that God has in store for us. Remember, Jesus didn't go on the cross to give us a greater ability to sin. He came for those of us who know God's commandments, who live by God's commandments, and because of the sins we may have had in the past, or we may endure in the future, that if we walk with God, repent of our sins, that we can receive that promise of eternal life. The story of Hannah is a beautiful story of a mother who was not ashamed to cry out to God and ask for a child, a man child. She was specific in what she wanted. She asked God for a man child and God gave her exactly what she asked for. But in the end, when she received the son, she made sure she gave back to God what she had promised in her vow she would do. She gave him over to God. And everyone has heard of Samuel. He was the last judge before God gave the people a king that they asked for. He was faithful until the end. Uh, so faithful that God had him to not only uh, uh, go and anoint the first king who was Saul, but he went and anointed the second king that God uh, called, and that was David. And we've got to remember that even when God called these kings, that God called them and he put his spirit upon them, knowing that that uh, old adage of trying to separate church and state just does not work. We need in our government people who know God, who believe in God, who trust God, who hear God, who follow God, that we may be able to follow that which is right in the sight of God. Oh, that's all I have for today. For those of you who have your mothers with you still, hug your mother for me. Uh, and for all of us who do not have our mothers any longer, I pray that God will give us beautiful memories only to flood our hearts that we may remember that tenderness and love that we received when our mother was yet with us, for she is yet still alive in our hearts because we loved her so much. Thank you for being with me this day. May God bless you, keep you till we meet again. Happy Mother's Day to everyone.